Hello everyone, this is Christian Mel at Exton Interactive. And in this video is a, a rather shorter video here, but we're just gonna focus on getting the syntax highlighting working here. So like I said, uh, you know, last episode we created the right, or formatted the right-hand side of our interface here, which involves a lot of code and code snippets and such, and looks a lot better if it gets uh, highlighted, brings it out against the rest of the text. So. We're, like I said, we're going to focus on just getting the syntax highlighting working in this uh, episode. All right, if you remember what we did in the uh, last video, we had uh, worked on the right hand side of our interface. so. Again, this has the elements or, or um, control form controls that we're creating. It also has a bunch of uh, code here, code snippets that we can use. And, you know, it looks cool enough, but we can up the coolness factor by adding a bit of syntax highlighting uh, for these examples here. So let's get started doing that. So the first thing that we're going to do is to install a package. So what we're going to use to do the syntax highlighting is a project called prism.js. So we'll npm install that. <clears throat> we'll go back to Visual Studio while I was doing that. Actually, uh, just to show, I guess, where we're at. Prism has time doing this uh, recording here. Prism's at 1.14.0. All right. So now let's do some... Creation. So we'll go in the source folder inside of our forms folder here. And inside of here, what we're going to do is add new item here. Text file. And what I'm going to call it is the syntax dash highlighting dot service dot ts. So as the name implies, we're going to create a service that will have Angular inject into the components that we need. And the code that I'm going to use here, I don't know how much I changed. I don't think I changed much, but um, you know, we are borrowing in air quotes the code that's uh, available. You can check out this blog post by uh, Orlina, I guess, uh, showing this implementation here. So why reinvent the wheel here? So what we'll need to do is import, and I guess we'll do from. This is Angular slash core. So let's import, I guess we need injectable because we want to tell Angular that this class can be injected. And we're also going to use the inject decorator as well. And I don't generally use it too much because basically I'm dealing with, uh, you know, front end components that have to be running in the browser to begin with. It's not something that I'm planning on running on the back end and all this stuff, but let's just stick with what she did so that we can remember. Actually, yeah, well, for whatever reason, it's on a separate line. So we'll do it too. Angular slash core. It could be up there in that import. Why it's not, who knows. But there's a platform ID in Angular Core, basically to tell us, you know, which type of platform it is. We'll use that, and we're going to import, and this one's going to be from Angular Common, and this one here is Platform Browser. So that'll tell us whether the platform ID is a browser or not. And now we need a few things from uh, Prism. So we'll import, and we're going to import Prism.js. Import uh, Prism.js slash, what do we want? Components. And what we need, so we need pug. We need. SCSS, should have done two at the same time, whatever. And this one's TypeScript. So that would be the highlighting. I like to show, you know, the name of the 
language when you hover over with your mouse it'll pop a little pop-up shows the name of the language so we're going to import in prism js slash plugin slash toolbar slash prism toolbar whoops craziness so we have the prism toolbar and what do we want this one we want plugins show language in this one prism show language figure we'll find out whether there's a what the odds are that I just typed all that correctly with any errors so what we'll say so once we import prism we'll get the uh, we'll have an, a variable called prism I don't know why I didn't look to see um, whether we could get some um, I'm sure there must be a type definition file for prism that I did not think to import maybe I'll do it later we really don't need anything to do though so we're going to export a class and call it syntax highlighting high lighting service high lighting service that's good and we'll come back up here we'll do the injectable decorator so we can get that now we'll do a constructor in this constructor here I didn't notice it in her code here well, I'll talk about it even a little bit later what we'll do right now is just do inject platform ID and we'll do uh, private read only platform ID Let's type object and what I want to do then, we'll have a method, public method, highlight, oh, <laughs> we'll have a public method inside the constructor, new language construction. So public, highlight all, and what we'll do here is just say if, and we'll say is platform browser, pass in the, uh, I have to make some adjusts. Her code, my code, you know, stick with uh, what we've been doing previously. Platform ID. I'll have to remember to update the article for that. Speaking of which, I keep forgetting to mention, of course, there is a link to an article related to this, uh, or for this video in the description below. So if, we're, if the platform is a browser, by passing in the platform ID, then we'll say prism. Prism has a method on it called highlight all. Again, I might check to see if we have some uh, type definitions and uh, maybe add it later. All right, so that's the service. So let's return to our forms.index.ts file and let's just export that thing. So from and syntax, oops. Highlighting service. Save that. Of course, now that we we want these uh, the highlighting service to be injected into our components, so let's come into the form examples module. And I have this imports for the actual components. This one here is for the examples. So we're going to sort of stick with that. We're going to create our own import then to bring in our highlighting service but we can still get it from the form examples dot index file of course because that's exporting all of the forms index stuff so we're going to take in the syntax <laughs> form examples index syntax highlighting service see thought I did something wrong so now we come down to the module definition and we do providers Providers is an array. Uh, one day, figure out formatting all that automatically, and we just need the whoop, syntax highlighting service. Let's save that. So now we should be able to get those within our code here. So we're going to turn into go to the basic example that we worked with. So basic example.component.ts file. 
And we might as well just do it up here. So now we can get the syntax highlighting service. So if all goes well, what we can do is to come down here <coughs> to our components, create a constructor for it. And what we want is then to have private, I call it underscore syntax highlighter syntax highlighting service. Okay. Oh, of course it can. Why is it not read only? So let's save that syntax highlighting service. Save that. Go back to the browser. We'll take a look here. And we're getting this error here. Some point in time when I did an update or something Got a little busted here, and it seems to be a problem with the metadata being um, included with the component when it's transpiled from TypeScript to JavaScript. But I've checked and to see if uh, on my TS config, where is it at? Right here. It's supposed to be ex true, emit decorator metadata true, decorator true. So. I as far as I'm aware, those should be what I need to do. Like I said I haven't done much to, to track down this problem because there's a simple solution and, you know, got to spend energy somewhere else. So in the Angular core, we're going to do, we're going to import this inject decorator. And so we'll come down here to our constructor. We'll do at inject. What we want to inject is syntax highlighting service. So typically the fact that we're putting this should generate everything that we need, you know, putting the type here should generate everything we need for Angular to know that this is what it's supposed to be injecting. But like I said, there's an issue and uh, you can always use this to be sure. So we'll go back, refresh, and we have no errors, so we're good to go so far. And now we want to actually do some highlighting. So what I want to have happen is for the highlighting to happen once. Let me do a little code folding here to pretty this up a bit. Okay, so now, like I said, we want it to happen once. And the way that we are going to do that is by using a Angular lifecycle hook, ng after view init. And just to be particular, we'll come up here, so it's after view init is the interface. So we'll say that our uh, component implements the after view init. And I did it the other way around just because I didn't want to see any, you know, red squigglies. So here we can do this dot syntax highlighter dot highlight all. Save that. Go back to the browser doesn't really look like anything happened, but it has. We can see now we have this pug, we have this TypeScript going on. These are the names that are going to show up when you hover over to tell you what the language is. So at least it's doing something and still no errors. So the last thing that we need to do is to apply some styling to it. And to do that, we're going to go to our main.site.scss file here. Simply import a few things. So we're going to import and where do you live? Oops, up one in node modules prism.js slash themes slash prism.css. And there's many different themes you can use. If, you, if you're interested, you can check them out. There's, a, of course, a link to the Prism website in the article. We also want node modules slash prism.js slash plugins slash toolbar prism-toolbar.css. Save that. And boom, we're back. And you already looking at it. We have this syntax highlighting going on. I said when you hover over here, you may be able to see in the video here, there's a little thing that pops up, tells you what the language is. I guess if you highlight on it, it'll come out even bolder. 
And uh, so that'll take care of the syntax highlighting for us. And uh, who knows what we'll do in the next video. Thank you for taking the time to watch our video. I know that your time is valuable. If you like the video, please subscribe to our channel and click the thumbs up button as well as share the video with your friends. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please leave them in the comments section below. And once again, thank you, and I will talk to you in the next video.